Hi, this is Mike for Music Group, and today we're here to proudly present the uh, Odyssey. As you know, Uli promised this since five years ago, and now we finally have it here, live and direct, in the flesh. Uh, it's working. It's still a prototype, but uh, it's working. And if you look at it, the panel, so you see it's a bit different than the original because we added some features that we thought might be of good use to the user. If we look at the panel and start up in the left corner, you can see we added an FX uh, unit to the unit with different uh, algorithms, classic bread and butter, delay chorus, reverb, different kinds of, and uh, also dual delays. You can see where you can tap tempo, uh, so and you can also get the effects out of the signal fold completely. You have a send effects. You can set parameters. It's a nice addition. If we go here, we have two oscillators with a. Uh, they don't have an octave switch. We have a broad. It's from really down to 20 hertz up to 2 kilohertz. So it's basically the same architecture as an ARP Odyssey. It is. It is a one to one. So one th another thing we added, if we move on and go here, comes the the LFO. LFO has two waveforms, but it also has a sample on hold that is like clocked by the LFO frequency, and it has also a lag processor, which is like a very a uh, unique function that the Odyssey has and it's like a portamento for the sample and hold so the random steps there's the glide between which sounds very lovely so if we look at the filter you see already another nice surprise we have the three filter types of all the uh, the art Odyssey three revisions yeah. yes so starting with the two pole filter from the white version can we to Yes, absolutely. Let's give it a try. Start just like very simple with a, with a square wave, no sync, so you can just hear what the filter does to the raw waveform. Now we add a bit of resonance and I just leave it at the mid position. a bit of sample and hold on the filter. So let's have a see how the four pole sounds. I'm going uh, back off with the resonance, filter completely open. Oh, we had the high pass open, so I'm gonna set this down because this affects the sound. There's also a little drive circuit here that uh, is lovely with the four pole versions. Let's have a listen how this sounds. So with a bit of resonance. So now I engage the drive circuit. And now we hear the, uh, the second four pole filter. Without resonance. You can also add the high cut, uh, high, uh, high. Yeah. Looking further, we have the envelopes. We have an RA envelope and an ADSR, and it's actually nice. You can switch, for example, uh, what the sources are. If you want the complex hook, uh, envelope for ex uh, the pitch modulation of the filter envelope, you can just switch the amp to the more simple AR envelope, what we have done here. And we just engage like now the filter envelope uh, uh, and see how that sounds. They are lightning fast, the envelopes. Very nice thumb to it. You see, uh, you said to me before the interview, you can um, enable the lights on the knobs. Um, uh, slides on the, the, uh, ah, the lights. lights on yeah, the yeah, yeah. So let 
let's look at here. So there are LEDs within the, the fader knobs, and they go from completely off to lightsaber bright, so almost retina scorching. But of course, in a dark environment, this can be a useful feature. But usually, of course, you want them rather uh, a bit dimmed. But it gives a nice overview. If you stand a bit away from the synthesizer, you get a good idea uh, how uh, your patch is set up. So, yeah, let's see one thing that is like very special and the favorite of mine also on the Odyssey is the sync sound. Let's see how that sounds. Of course, uh, control the sync via sample and hold or via envelope. For example, if I said like for classical sync loud, so you want to have like a long uh, envelope. something zip or add some sample on holds. And you see if we add the output lag for the sample on hold, there's a sort of glide in between, so it doesn't make this abrupt uh, changes. Like an ARP. It sounds like an ARP, yeah. Um, then I see that you added also a little uh, sequencer and arpeggiato. Was it not available on the newer Quark one or yes. the older ARP Odyssey? Yes. Can you tell me a bit about this? Yeah, absolutely. We thought that would be a nice addition to the things because if you sequence it, uh, it's just a synth where it may make sense. And you can see if we like start the recording, you can see it's You can see the steps are counting and after eight steps you switch up a bar so you have a total of eight times eight steps so in total 64 step sequence and you can also set hold and rest and yeah uh, do also like if you want to have a three or like an uneven number step sequence you can also do this either by limiting the, the step the end step or just uh, record three step and, uh, and start. So um, parameter automation or something is not uh, available or are not yet known. Uh, not yet known. We uh, well, we got revealed the synth. We got this yesterday, so it's still no. There's no manual available. So even for me, it's a bit of guessing here. But I know of Gary the sequencer. And um, you say there's a handful of effects. Do you know how many or is yeah, it clear? Let's, let's, uh, let's have a look. So uh, it isn't like the full multi effects from the DeepMind 6, but we have a selection of Clark algorithms. And we have from, so let's see what we have available. We have dual effects like a delay in the core roach, a dual voice pitch shifter, so you get sort of a pseudo polyphonic. Uh, uh, sounds out of it. Delay and reverb, chorus reverb, low five LFO filter, a talk box, and the talk box is also tempo sync, so there's uh, um, uh, modulation uh, going on. So then, uh, so I can uh, tap it, and then it's a mum filter. Let's let's have a look how this sounds because I haven't heard it. So. Also nice. You have an ascent uh, return. You can also see how much you get into the FX tuning, so you don't overpower this. So that so is, we uh, get a handful of good uh, different effects here. Yeah. So let's see. Well, wait. There's more. There's a, a clipper. So we had that one. Let's go the other direction. We were 
no, we were here at the pitch. So then we have a pen a tremolo combination. There's the phaser and the flanger available, a standard chorus, and a whole lot of different reverb algorithms. Early refraction, ambience, more so shorter. These are coming from the Clark. Yeah, from engineers. the from the, yeah. from the big Clark. There's yeah, Clark and the detune, reverse gated uh, gated reverb, one or two, a spring reverb, play different kind of sir, a diggy verb, a chamber, room three, two, one. So there's actually quite a good selection, this particular reverb algorithm. Different kind of rooms, also big churches. So okay. well, that's lovely. Let's let's see how that sounds. If I go in. I can also edit the parameters so and then for church it can be extremely up to 10 seconds let's give it a listen how this sounds so maybe try a bit Side. Yes, absolutely. So the backside has also some surprises. As we've seen already, we can control uh, the LED brightness from completely off to full on. There's a MIDI in and out. We have USB, which also supports USB MIDI and probably also for firmware updates. So there are two pedal inputs, like a normal pedal and a portamento foot switch. So you can turn this on and off while you're playing. It's great for lead sounds. There is like a symmetric XLR based uh, uh, output, a high output and a low output via 6,3 point jack uh, cable. You have an external audio input and uh, phones also with regulatable uh, uh, loudness plus six trigger points. You, so you can CV also in, CV out, yeah. gate in, gate out and, and trigger in and trigger in. out. So okay. it's also you can integrate this with your modular which I think it's also a very nice. And I see uh, it's called Odyssey. Yes. So this will be maybe the final name of it. Yeah, I say because it's an Odyssey. Um, concerning a release date, or is there any information? What well, you can we don't say? have a, a release date. I mean, we are uh, with this one. We are relatively close to manufacturing, mm -hmm. but the best thing I can say is still in 2018. Price points? It's not decided, or I don't know it yet. So, but it will be affordable. Okay. You know. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>